Hello, I'm Eddie Thrasher. Today's tutorial will provide an overview of split brain DNS, sometimes referred to as split horizon DNS, split view DNS, or simply split DNS. Our first example shows what happens when an internal client within a domain requests a web page outside its own domain. In order to view yahoo.com's web page, the client computer uses its own built-in resolver to send a request to the internal DNS server. This domain controller with DNS enabled on it then sends a query out onto the wire through the internet cloud to the root server. The domain controller does all the work. It has recursion turned on and does not send any information back to the client computer until it has the address of the web page requested, which in this instance is yahoo.com. The root server does not know where yahoo.com is. It does, however, know the address of the .com servers and answers the domain controller's query with the IP address of the .com servers. The domain controller then sends out another query across the wire to the .com servers asking where yahoo.com is. The servers answer with the IP address of yahoo.com not www.yahoo.com. Yahoo.com is the web server within the yahoo.com domain. The domain controller then sends a query out across the wire asking yahoo.com for the address for www.yahoo.com. The yahoo.com servers are the authoritative name servers for the domain yahoo.com. Therefore, they answer the query with the IP address of www.yahoo.com and sends it back to the domain controller. It is at this point that the domain controller sends the IP address to the client's resolver, which in turn sends the IP address to the client's browser. The browser builds a GET packet and sends it to the IP address of www.yahoo.com. The packet travels to www.yahoo.com, which should have a web server. The web server pulls up the information, sends it back across the internet to the client's computer in the form of a web page. The domain controller does not send the request to DNSE1 or DNSE2. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even know DNSE1 and DNSE2 exist. Let's take a look at another example. A home user types eddythrasher.com into their browser. The machine first checks its cache and finds there are no records. It then sends a query to the router's forwarder. The forwarder then sends a request to the ISP's DNS server. The ISP's DNS server is the resolver. It does the work using recursion. And much like the earlier example, it does not communicate with the home PC until it gets an answer. The ISP's DNS sends a query out through the wire onto the internet to the root server. The root server does not know where eddythrasher.com is, but it does provide the address for the .com servers. The ISP's resolver, through recursion, sends a query to the .com servers as to where eddythrasher.com is located. The .com server sends an answer with the address of DNSE1 and DNSE2 
to the ISP's DNS resolver since DNSE1 and DNSE2 are the authoritative servers for eddythrasher.com. The ISP's resolver then sends a query out to both DNSE1 and DNSE2. Whichever one answers first sends back the answer to the query as to what the IP address is for eddythrasher.com. They answer with the public outside IP address of eddythrasher.com. The address is forwarded by the ISP DNS through the home router to the PC's resolver. The browser then builds a GET packet with the public IP address in the heading, heading containing www.eddythrasher.com. The packet travels out of the browser from the home PC out to the router, to the Internet Cloud, to Grand Rapids, Muskegon, Saginaw, wherever it goes, and then over to the router on eddythrasher.com. The packet hits the outside of the router using the public IP address of the router. Once the packet hits the outside of the router using the public IP address, it's translated through NAT, because this router is a NAT box, to an inside address of where that web page is located. The router then forwards the packets using NAT. Once inside the domain eddythrasher.com, it travels to the web server which answers the query by sending back a web page to the home PC. So the web page travels out of the domain controller, through the router, out onto the wire, to the internet, down to the home router, to the user's PC. Our explanation of split brain DNS is not complete without understanding how internal requests for internal resources are executed. If we connect our laptop inside the domain and the DHCP is set up correctly, we will obtain an IP address that is within the same domain. The laptop should have the same DNS server as the client computer in the first example. When we request a web page such as eddythrasher.com, which is already within the domain because it is hosted on this server, our laptop's resolver should send its request to the internal DNS server to be resolved. The DNS server, server will answer with the IP address of eddythrasher.com the laptop's resolver then sends the address to its browser. The browser again builds a GET packet which it sends over to this web server and the web server answers by sending back the web page. That pretty much sums up split brain DNS. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.